we are now on to our spot spotlights. Um, reminder to keep them short so that we save a full 10 minutes for our deep dive. And we have a lot of things to cover. Uh, and I believe the first one is a video from Mira. Hello. In today's spotlight, I'd like to show you how easy it is to build new modules for a Filecoin station using our new runtime called Xenia so that you can measure the performance of your peer-to-peer -peer networks and services from different places all around the world. Let's start by implementing the actual probe where we dial a ping protocol, send some requests and measure the latency of how long it takes. Then we write this measured data into InfluxDB using their HTTP API for submitting new data. And we can use the fetch API, which you probably know from the browser. And then we put this all together in a loop, which uh, choose a random peer, then it measures the ping latency and then records the data into InfluxDB. And then using this data, we can visualize what's going on with our network. You can use InfluxDB dashboards or you can pull the data into Grafana. And that's it. It was only 76 lines of code. You can find the full example on GitHub. You can learn more about building station models in our documentation. And finally, if you, this is something you can use for your project, please come and join the module builders working group. You can find us on Filecoin Slack. Awesome. Thank you, Miro. Um, over to Steve. Great. Yeah. Hello. Uh, IPFS thing is, com is coming up quick, April 15th through 19th here in Brussels. So not many weeks away. A uh, few things I want to say. First off, anyone is welcome to this. People working closely on or with the collection of IPFS protocols will will be there, including business, other businesses and infra providers. Um, this is much broader than people just making commits in the GitHub. It's intended to be much broader than people making uh, commits in the IPFS GitHub org. So, for example, teams like Saturn, I think, have a lot to benefit to share their experience and needs, influence others, get feedback, identify product gaps, etc. And this is more than a place just to present status. It's a place to get work done, especially days four and five are going to be open for workshops and brainstorm sessions. So um, please be thinking about how you can leverage this event. Uh, so far, 10 plus tracks, over 100 uh, people have registered. You do need to buy a ticket for this. So if you're part of PL Andres, um, buy a ticket, but obviously talk with your manager. This will come out of um, your, your group's budget. Um, and there is you can request a hotel room to be part of the uh, block that we have. There's messages in PL Slack's lobby there. And please do this soon, ideally this week or next, just to help the organizers out. And there will likely be a pre-meeting coming up for those involved from Endres so that we're aligned and clear on what we're trying to get out of the event for ourselves and for the community. And for anyone watching this that's outside of Protocol Labs, yes, you need to buy a ticket, but know that there is a scholars program, which offers a fully paid opportunity for individuals from underrepresented communities or unique circumstances to join the event. And so again, if you have a demo you want to give, presentation you want to share, or workshop that you want to host, please submit that through the website. That's 2023ipfs-thing.io. And uh, you don't have to have all the details named, nailed down, but it really helps the organizers get a sense of what, what's coming and would love to have you be there and participate. Thanks a lot. Look forward to seeing folks soon. Awesome. Hope to see everyone there. It's going to be a great time. Over to Alex for Falcon Cron Risk and Resolutions. Hey, everyone. Uh, so the Filecoin network has this thing called cron, which is a scheduled execution of actor code at the end of every epoch that is done on behalf of the system. So no external party pays for it. Uh, this does some you know, important uh, system maintenance tasks. Uh, but uh, we started seeing a lot of work happening in this cron, uh, so much so that it ended up being three times the entire target uh, total for, for an epoch's validation uh, happening in this uh, unpaid for bonus uh, extra time execution. Um, uh, this is starting to affect block validation times and fast validation is really important for a blockchain network's decentralization, allowing lots of nodes to participate and keep up with the chain um, and for chain quality so that the uh, block producers can produce their next block on time um, after evaluating the, the previous tip set. Um, uh, we discovered that this the, the built-in storage market is responsible for almost all of this uh, blowout in cron execution. Uh, and uh, because it, it offers a very high level of service to its, its clients of incremental deal payments uh, every day, um, this is probably uh, far too much of a service for a built-in subsidized uh, thing to be offering, particularly since most deals have no payments. And so this is a total waste of time. Um, but happily, we caught this just in time to uh, be able to uh, detect this, understand what was going on, and uh, propose a fix for the Filecoin network in, in time to just roll this into our normal release train. Uh, the, the next, uh, you know, the release this will target is, is network version 19, which uh, you know, the, the planning for is already already underway. Um, 
And so we've done a short term fix, which just you know divide the problem by thirty, uh, and that will buy us you know a good six months, you know at least six months uh, to find a, a more permanent fix for this problem. Um, ultimately, that fix is probably going to be removing this uh, automatic payment uh, processing and putting the built-in market actor down on the same playing field as all other sort of user programmed actors that could be markets, uh, which won't have access to this uh, cron primarily because it's very hard to trust uh, the code uh, that's going to run there. Um, so thanks very much to Kabuksu and Zenground who did most of the work about this and have been on this problem for a while. Um, I just happened to get lucky and, and did the little bit of analysis that discovered it was the market actor. Um, but yeah, expect this to be fixed and then Filecoin block violation times to drop uh, a lot um, in network version 19 sometime uh, in uh, Q2. Woot woot. Great to see the proactive measuring is helping us take uh, early steps and avoid fire drills. Uh, great, great example of that. We always prefer that versus having to do the fire drill itself. So uh, awesome work, you guys. Uh, Hi. Uh, oh, sorry. Yeah. Hi, uh, I'm Kuba. Uh, so, uh, small deals, uh, small deals, uh, accepting small deals for storage providers is, is an issue. It's an issue, issue of scale for for medium sized storage provider, a storage provider who have to accept on the order of million deals a day to to be able to uh, million small deals a day to be able to fill up their their selling pipelines, which is why aggregation services uh, showed up uh, some time in the past within Falcon Network. Uh, like uh, Ashuri and dot storage. Uh, those aggregation services, while they provide the service of aggregation, the client completely currently completely trusts that, that aggregation service, which which is fine for as long as those services are, are trustworthy, which is the case currently. The drawback of that process is the client cannot prove to uh, uh, cannot verify that uh, their data was aggregated correctly, and they cannot show to another party that they, their data was ag uh, aggregated correctly within that deal. Which is why we uh, uh, why we created the verifiable the data aggregation standard, uh, which produces proof of data, data segment inclusion. So the proof of data segment inclusion ensures correct aggregation of clients' data within the sectors and allows the client to show that proof to a third party or uh, to, to the contract on chain, which is an imp important use case in FEVVM, -E where, for example, contract uh, uh, people might want to pay for storage of small, small deals, uh, but this wouldn't be able to uh, be executed on because uh, very, uh, very, very small a number of storage providers will accept small deals. So uh, the, the, the standard uh, itself defines how to aggregate the data, how to build an index, which is stored in, inside the sector of all the data that was aggregated within the, the larger deal, such that uh, retrieval is still, still possible and very easy. Uh, we've reached a design consensus and FRC was published. The Go code for proof generation is complete. Uh, we're currently working on a Solidity uh, verifier uh, for uh, for this proof, such that contracts can verify those those uh, uh, those aggregated uh, uh, aggregated deals on chain, uh, and we, we will be starting uh, integration with that storage soon, and uh, most likely with Asuri as well. Thank you. Awesome, trustless aggregation is a big problem, and uh, exciting to see um, more protocol tools for people to aggregate all of the little data they want to store in Filecoin into nice big chunks that make everyone's life easy to work with. Um, so great work. Check out the FRC if you want to know more. All right, looks like we have a video on you can invocation spec. User controlled authorization network, you can for sure now has an invocation spec and we put together this interactive observable document so you can explore it in more interactive way. It uses several tools like IPLD schemas to parse and validate schemas on the fly. It uses reference implementation to generate data sets from the code snippets. For example, here, it showcases the tasks that this code snippet would generate, uh, invocations that it would produce. And you can also go look at the whole car uh, that has a bunch of blocks in them, like the task we saw earlier, invocation, that reference it and authorization and authorization itself. You can also go and modify the code, rerun it, and see how the data sets change. Uh, hopefully, this is more fun way to explore the specification than wall of text. I also hope you will join Web3 Storage and IPVM into implementing this specification. Awesome to see. I'm sure we're going to hear a little bit more about the power of UCANs in our deep dive as well. Um, but great to have good explorable specs 
um, a great, great example of using uh, observable for that as well. All right, um, NFT forever, Shrinuj, Scott, tell us more. Yes, hello, um, Scott here from uh, PhilDev. So today I'm gonna uh, talk to you guys quickly about uh, NFT forever, which is uh, the goal is to preserve off-chain NFT data as a public good. And so we're combining a few new things uh, to, to give a new programmatic deal-making flow. So you're taking FEM, Filecoin, and Lotus, and what, what is the, the embryo of a FRC standard uh, to create a new programmatic flow. So you can see here, what we do is you make a deal proposal by calling a smart contract. You pay a little gas. Inside the smart contract, you have both the escrow, which is the file coin, and the data cap itself. That contract then acts as a client um, and emits an event for a deal proposal um, onto the blockchain that is picked up by a, a storage provider running Boost. They then grab the data out of the payload from the event, in this case, from nft.storage, which is a pre-aggregated car file of many NFTs. Uh, we'll do the sealing process, create a, a whole new deal, and then verify it back on chain through the smart contract, contract to say, yes, this is the, the SID that I want. Yes, this is the deal that I want. And then open it up to logic. So what we've done here is actually decoupled who's providing the data from who's providing the funding and the data cap, as well as who is going to be picking up and verifying the deal. So you start to see um, a more organic market, uh, marketplace uh, forming there. So we're producing a smart contract and we're going to have some storage providers on Pi Day to be accepting deals. I think we're getting up to at least, I think we're, I think we're targeting 70 deals a day um, for the first few weeks to kind of get it moving. Um, there were a lot of people behind this in uh, deal client contract. We had uh, multiple product managers across multiple groups um, and then big technical lifts from both uh, Lotus, Boost, um, and some folks like Micros as well. So that is coming. Everybody is heads down, which is why you had to suffer um, through me. Uh, and so that is going out next week. And let's give those guys uh, a good hand and, and watch it uh, accompanying the FEVM launch. Thanks. Super exciting. Showing the power of FEVM to take uh, all of these uh, kind of off-chain tools and bring them uh, use, utilizing this new automation framework. So hopefully uh, things get more verifiable, more automated, um, and just easier to run and maintain into the future as well um, with programmable storage. Pretty cool. Over to Jamie for the awesome countdown to FBM event from last week. Yes. <clears throat> Hi, everybody. I'm Jamie with the Outer Core Events team here to tell you about um, our countdown to FBM event which took place last week on March 1st. It was the day before the East Denver conference portion started. Um, it was held in the same venue as the FEM Hacker Base. So it was hosted by the Falcon Foundation. So we flipped the venue over for the countdown to FEM event, which was a huge success. Um, lots of excitement surrounding the upcoming launch of FEM. It brought in 873 registrations and more than 300 in-person attendees including um, devs and investors in the audience. Uh, this event was streamed on ETH Global TV for virtual attendees and had over 50,000 live stream views, which is huge. It was actually um, the third largest audience from all events hosted on ETH Global TV. Um, there were lots of incredible presentations, panels, and more from 34 speakers. And there were 18 projects featured in the early FVM Builder Showcase. A couple of exciting things to highlight from Sarah and the FVM team, um, client contract deal-making flow is live with a very big thanks to FVM, Lotus, and Boost and Dredge teams. Um, they did a demo of this at the event, and there's also going to be a recorded workshop shown on Scaling Ethereum Hackathon today at 12 PST on ETH Global TV. There's a couple of the record uh, links there with the recordings to the presentations from the event, the event photos, and a great sizzle reel there recapping everything. So be sure to check those out. Thanks to everyone who helped contribute to this being a huge success. Awesome. It was a fantastic event. If you weren't there, go watch the live stream from, from ETH Global because there's some good, good content. Um, and this was a component of our overall like Endres presence at ETH Denver, um, which happened last week in Denver. Um, which was a super awesome gathering of um, tons of groups working across 
the Ethereum, uh, Filecoin, Layer 2, and, and many other related ecosystems. Um, we had a ton of different events that we um, helped host and or participated in. Um, there was a Launchpad and FDM Social, a Crypto Econ Day, the Countdown to FDM event that Jamie just told us about. Um, there was some uh, awesome dinners organized by the TLDR team. Uh, and we also participated pretty heavily in the ETH Denver um, like uh, event itself. We had a booth there. We had some main stage talks. Um, we also helped judge the hackathon in, in many different areas um, and uh, saw a lot of amazing folks coming by, getting really excited about FBM and how they can make use of it. Um, and, and also engaging super deeply with the kind of new breakthroughs that are coming coming out of, of the PL network and, and our ecosystem these days. Um, and it was a great gathering point for many different builders um, from groups like you know, Huddle, Glyph, Impossible Cloud, um, and others who are all harnessing some of these new, new technology. Um, and so excited to collaborate with them as well.